guys and welcome to the first of hopefully many tutorial videos uh, we really want this channel to focus more on um, us passing our tips and tricks uh, to you as you know by now uh, our specialty is wildlife um, me personally I've been drawing animals for most of my life um, and the majority of my art has involved birds. So today I wanted to show you a quick way of creating something like this. Um, I think I'll focus on the fairy wren which is a native Australian bird, give you an idea of how I create a piece like this. Um, I probably won't really go into much detail of any uh, regarding the flowers uh, we just want to keep it simple now my work tends to be quite complicated and looking at something that is that complicated can be really disheartening especially to a beginner um, and so I want to show you how to create something like this uh, how to focus basically on ensuring that the ratios are accurate and that you're putting in the various components of the creature in the right place um, and how to look past the complexity of um, something like a bird, especially one that's multicolored. So uh, the materials that you'll need here are obviously a piece of paper or a sketchbook. Uh, I think we'll create the messy drawing first and then I'll give you some tips about how you can transfer that image onto uh, better paper such as watercoloring paper. Now, these are the materials that I tend to use. My initial sketch is usually done with a red lead. Now, I use this in a mechanical pencil, but you could use a color, like a, a normal red color pencil, such as a polychromos or a um, Caran d'Ache or something like that. Uh, something that isn't going to rub off too easily. So that's usually my first layer. My second tends to be with a very light pencil such as a H or an F and this is just to bring my components together um, before I insert a lot of my details. So this is important to try and determine which part of the bird goes where, where does the wing start from, um, where does the tail end, etc. And then finally we have the 2B pencil and that's what I use to put in my details. Now just keep in mind that this is the sketch and this could either stay a sketch eternally or I could basically take it out and um, turn it into something, uh, something like a painting. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so the first question I'll probably get is in regards to using a reference. I believe wholeheartedly in using a reference for your sketches. I wouldn't recommend that you copy a piece directly for finished painting or artwork without um, seeking permission and crediting the original photographer or the original artist. Uh, I do use references predominantly put, while I put together a sketch. I tend to look at multiple references of the same bird uh, and then basically create a, a completed piece out of the various components that I see in various references. Uh, this is quite important especially once you have a good idea of what constitutes that animal you know uh, can you basically put together something that looks like what it's supposed to from multiple references and that comes with practice but for practice i do highly recommend you use references so um, fairy wrens are native australian birds i've drawn quite a few of them in my time uh, they're really tiny little birds, uh, about, I think smaller than the golf ball, about golf ball size. The males tend to be really bright, um, the females tend to be a bit duller, but they're really adorable little fluff balls. And for some reason I'm really drawn to them, I basically just sketch them without even thinking about it. 
So the way I start with any bird piece is by using um, shapes and I think anybody who's looked at a drawing book sees that as um, a, a pretty useful tool to breaking down a complex picture. With regards to birds you're mainly looking at straight lines, circles and ovals. So if we were to basically take break down the fairy wren we will have a circle for the head and then depending obviously on um, the pose of your bird the the egg shape and the egg shape can either tilt up or down depending on how the bird is standing so for this particular um, drawing and again I'll show you the piece that we're working on you've got the head there and the egg pointing slightly upwards so the way we do that is basically like that now connecting the two together we'll be using our H pencil now with a tail it's a pretty straightforward straight line um, I'm I've got four tail feathers here uh, two main ones at the top and then some slightly smaller ones towards the bottom like so and then just to give us an idea of where the bird is looking basically you I draw a straight line so in this case I want him to look up and so I've got a straight line dissecting the circle in this manner now I didn't draw that straight line here but if I was to do so you'd see that it would do this and really that's what you need to start at the most um, I don't usually do these lines but I did them in this case just to show you um, where the lines where the circle and the oval connect just to give us an idea of how far out his chest moves and that's about it that's the start of the fairy run now we bring in our HB pencil and this is basically just to connect the pieces together. We still don't have the details, we don't have the legs, we don't have the wings, but we'll be adding those in now. So starting with the beak, which is what I always do. That's where this straight line comes in handy. That's all we need here. Now, using the reference will obviously be vital here. You need to determine how far out the beak goes and how thin it is uh, to ensure that the characteristics of the birds are uh, accurate. But this is sufficient for now. Then we've got his head. And we'll use our circle. Now, obviously, we're not tracing the circle. His head isn't a complete circle but you're using it as a guide and in this case since he's looking up his neck basically squishes in with his body so we're not really going to have much more happening here we're basically going to go straight out to his back like so now for this side Again, we're not copying the lines, we're just using them as a guide. And fairy wrens, typically when they're in a pretty aggressive um, mood tend to get quite fluffy um, and you think that their head is actually quite large for their bodies so again it's just important to look at some references perhaps some videos just to get an idea of the bird you know if you study the bird you can try and incorporate their personality in your piece now 
to get just an idea of where his wing is um, we'll just add the shoulder and this you could actually go back to your red pencil if you need to and add some shapes if you, if you have to Now, this can be as messy as you want it to be. Use the red pencil, go nuts, try and figure out what, what happens where. Um, that's the entire point of this. This is just a sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's you basically trying to get the ratios and proportions right. That's the most important thing here. Okay, so we've got an idea of where his wing goes. Now, just remember, I am using um, a couple of references, and that's this isn't me just free drawing. Okay. Now, for the tail feathers, it's got pretty long tail feathers. They're pretty easy. It's basically a straight line, a bit of a rounded top, and then back down again. Uh, just be careful in the configuration. So this is going to be the tail feather that's closest to me, and so this will take precedent. It will come in, uh, in front of this back feather there, and again, rounded top, back down. Uh, we don't need to worry about the detail now, that can come later. Again, this feather now is closer to me, so at the bottom, this is first. Mm, okay, so I basically drew over that one, that's fine. You can just bring that in here. And here we go. At the moment, don't attach it to the body just yet. We do have quite a bit of feathers hiding um, when the tail, tail feathers actually come in. Now for the feet. Now keep in mind that the thighs of the bird are basically come about here so the leg wouldn't just come straight out of the body. If you want, use a bit of a circle. You could use your red pencil or this. And then from there, the straight lines for his feet okay okay so I think now we could perhaps begin adding some more detail let me bring the camera down so you can see okay so this is how I do it I bring in the feathers and now I focus on the eye. The eye is really important. The way I recommend doing it is a circle. And then the eyelids slightly. Now this bird's eye isn't exactly a circle. It does taper towards this, this end. And so that's what I'm doing here. So keep um, careful watch on where exactly the eye is um, with regards to where the beak is. So not too high, not too low. Just go in and add some more of the detail in a pretty um, high level breakdown. So we're still not adding too much detail. Now with regards to the wing, um, pay careful attention to the makeup of the feathers. You usually have the feathers along the back, then you have 
the first row of feathers here and then you've got the flight feathers in there Again, be careful keep a close eye on how long these are you don't want them to be too long or too short okay and um, now to ensure that we get his feet right we need to get the branch that he's standing on right so this is where I recommend you actually draw the at least a part of the foot first just to give you an idea so that's his back toe and so that means he's standing on something that probably ends about here and then take that back his back leg you can't actually see it you can only see um, a bit of the back claw there now branches are really forgiving you can basically twist them and turn them as you need so if you know if you wanted to put the leg further in the branches can follow what you want it to do so we have a general idea now of what our bird is doing uh, we can now bring in the 2b pencil and add some more detail now, again, your drawing, especially an early drawing, will not be this neat, and it's not supposed to be. Um, I will take um, a moment later on to give you an idea of what my sketches look like and show you just how messy they can be. Okay, now with our 2B pencil, By the time we get to this stage, we have a pretty good idea of what we want. that basically um, characterize the bud so it's important to get these right he's got some beautiful turquoise feathers along his cheek Now, the way I um, try and portray the fluffy feathers is by doing that, just raising them up slightly. And just be careful that you don't make anything too um, neat or perfect. Because the bird is not really a cutout. You know, different feathers are different sizes, different colors. Okay, now he's back. He's got these fluffy feathers that sort of go up towards the tail. Like that. Let me think. I think I'm just going to change those feathers on his head slightly. I recommend using a um, putty eraser. I'm not too sure I put mine now, so I'll just use that for now. So 
So avoid really clean rounded lines because feathers don't really lie completely flat unless you know the bird is pretty alert. Uh, in this case he's intentionally uh, fluffy, he's fluffed up a bit so just keep that in mind and don't just do a straight line down unless that's what your reference shows. Okay, now for the wing, Not quick feather there. Um, I generally don't tend to count feathers unless I am doing a really accurate painting. But the important thing here is to try and change or vary the location and the size of the feathers. They sit on top of each other in a certain way and they're not neat feathers. Sometimes, you know, they're a bit messy. Um, so just keep that in mind. And then you've got the smaller, fluffier feathers on top. Um, they also don't sit in a way that you would expect. So always look really closely at your reference. Okay, so I've noticed that I've taken these out a bit too far. So I'm going to have to bring them back in a bit. Now I'm just going to twist my paper um, and start working on those flight feathers. So you'll notice that um, they're, they don't fall exactly the way you expect them to. Some of them are wider, some of them are thinner, um, and some tend to fall on top of the others. So just ensure that you look at your reference really carefully. But it's a good idea to have the shape done fast and then sort of fill it in. Got more of those fluffy feathers there. Got more fluffy feathers underneath the tail, and these basically match up with the feathers here. And then we get to the bird's thigh. The way I usually draw this is by having a neater line coming down on this side, but a sort of fluffier, fuzzier line at the back. And there you go, that's a thigh. It's important to ensure that. Um, it's sitting where it's supposed to and that the legs are not too far back or too far forward. Foot. Now the fairy wren has three toes at the front and then one at the back. Um, with this particular pose most of his toes are hidden. So we'll see the closest toe to us, there'll be two more there that we don't see clearly and then the toe at the back. Now uh, bird feet are pretty complicated to draw. Um, I'll probably do a tutorial on that later specifically about bird feet i'm not going to really touch on it now this particular pose is pretty um simple we've got toe at the back okay now what we have the tail. Now I tend to keep this line more straight and then on the way down I add some lines. Don't don't make them too uniform.
So this sort of meridian, medium line there, you could use that to show um, where, uh, basically the rotation of the feather. So, you know, if you add it towards this side, then you'll be looking at the feather in a different way than if you added it in the middle. we go now if you so choose you could ink this piece uh, using a pen of your choosing um, something like this perhaps and then just use that as a um, an easier reference point for when you want to uh, trace the piece out now I never draw like this straight onto my watercolor paper ever um, this is me trying to get the proportions um, and and the characteristics right and then what I use is a light box to transfer this image to my proper paper that's because watercolor paper is quite delicate especially if you're using hot press paper and making mistakes and then rubbing them off will damage the sizing on the paper and will basically really make it difficult for you to add a consistent paint on top so you could use a light box um, I've, I know some people basically just tape everything to a window and trace it that way um, if the paper you're copying this to is thinner say because you want to use color pencils you may be able to uh, trace it directly because you've added some pretty dark lines the important thing here is to not add too many conflicting dark lines because then it'll make it really hard for you to actually know what you want to copy and that's where the um, light pencil and the um, red pencils are really handy because um, they'll give you a really good idea of um, you know your outlines but they won't uh, confuse you when you're trying to trace your uh, picture to better paper. And that's usually where I tend to leave the sketch. Um, anything to do with color, uh, I tend to leave for my proper painted piece. Now, if you do decide to transfer this onto a watercolor paper, perhaps I will have a follow up video uh, where I will transfer this piece onto a piece of uh, Arches hot press paper, like so. I will use my light box, I'll transfer it across and then I'm not too sure yet if I want to ink the piece and then paint it or if I want to paint it directly. So if you do have suggestions, if you do need tips on how to ink a piece, what sort of ink you need to use, uh, let me know and perhaps that's what I will do. Now that is the simpler method, it's definitely simpler to uh, copy the piece and ink it obviously with waterproof ink prior to painting it because then you will have uh, a really clear guide uh, as to where you should be adding color it will be like coloring in the coloring book it's much more difficult if you're actually painting a piece that's done just with pencil at least in my experience i find it to be so okay so this is our completed fairy wren um you can see in this piece that um, I raised the wings slightly higher I also basically gave a bit of a curve to the feathers you can honestly do whatever you want um, see if I could try and find an example of where I've done some really messy sketches mm, probably not in this particular sketchbook I mean I really I do understand that it could be pretty overwhelming for uh, those beginning art uh, to see something that's you know seems quite close to perfect it's never the case for many artists so this is a bit of an example of how messy some of my um, 
original sketches can be. Uh, I don't think I've got anything else in this sketchbook. Mm, give me one sec. Okay, so this is a completed sketchbook. Let me see. Here you'll see those red lines practically everywhere. You'll see that there's lots of changes, lots of uh, amendments before I lay down any of the actual graphite. See, it's just really messy. You'll find a lot of circles in my art. Those would be my initial um, lines. And I do that pretty frequently. See here? Look how much work was done with the red before I laid the graphite down. You can see especially when you get to those flowers at the bottom. So never feel that something is too complex or too complicated. Break it down, use those guiding um, shapes and then just go nuts with your red pencil basically trying to determine what comes where, uh, to what level, change it. You can see here where I've done exactly that. Um, the feathers here were too short compared to the primaries and so I've extended them. Um, and then use that going forwards. I've done that again. I use sort of lines like this to get an idea both of how long feathers are in comparison to each other and just to give a clean flow to something like this where there's a bit of an arc. Uh, pay close attention to the reference to make sure that you're not um, getting something like feathers too perfect. They're not. The distances vary, the feather itself varies. Uh, and it's really important to get that right so that your animal doesn't look like a, something that was created uh, using a computer. Um, I think we'll leave it there for now. Um, I really hope you found this useful. Um, I do hope that you've either followed along or found yourself a similar reference to copy because I do want to create um, another follow-up tutorial where we paint this little guy. So if you have the time, if you're interested, do work on this, create something similar and then I will see you in another video uh, and we can paint it together. So until then, Thank you very much for your support please like and subscribe if you want to see more work like this um, and as always uh, take the time put in the effort um, art is always worth it and if you do have any questions do let me know thank you